And welcome back to our live coverage as we count down to the start of the race. Can't wait. Finally, we can't, can't wait. wait. Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb joins us now live. Uh, you two are so excited oh. about this finally this opportunity to have yeah. all these people here at the Speedway today. It's, it's great to see so many smiling faces and, and I uh, will never take one inch of this place for granted again. I've always loved the place. Uh, but you know we've earned it. We've we've worked our way back toward this, and we're going to have a spectacular race. Yeah, tell us about the work that has gone into getting us to this day, getting more Hoosiers vaccinated, dealing with all the precautions and everything that we're dealing with. What has that been like for you to go through all this? Well, I may have a little more gray hair than I did before I started. But, <laughs> no, it, it's been a, it's been just like the race. It's it's all about teamwork. It's all about working with uh, your local community, the state, our federal partners building the systems, making sure that we're methodically giving access to folks to get vaccinated. The proof is in the pudding. I mean, the, the facts speak for themselves. 99.3% of all of our new COVID cases are from unvaccinated folks, right? So since we started vaccinating, it works and it gets us through this. It gets us to the victory circle, so to speak. Um, but, you know, we've earned it. We've gotten to this day. Fortunately, this is a big outdoor event, so I feel very confident and uh, that we're going to have a great race. It's going to be a tight race. It's sunny and 70. I keep telling all our out of uh, state guests, you know, it's like this every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> stay. Don't just come for the race. Stay. It's usually not this cold in the morning, <laughs> however. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, but look, it's going to be, they're going to be screaming around the track. It's so tight. It's so competitive. They say it's, you know, one of the most competitive fields in the last decade plus. So, Folks are in for a treat today. You, you're a proponent of vaccination, so too are our state sure. health leaders. Uh, so too Indiana University wanting to put this requirement in place for people that are faculty, staff, and students by August to be vaccinated. We have some lawmakers that uh, are not supportive of that and want and want you to weigh in. What? How do you? Well, you know, there was. You're, you're absolutely correct as always. You know, some some legislators wrote me a note. I found that. Um, a little rich in that when we were working our way through the height of the of the pandemic, folks were asking me not to do executive orders. And now that we're on the downside and we're starting to step down our executive orders, all of a sudden folks want me to do executive orders. So I think this will work its way out. Um, and there's there's more than one way to skin a cat. So we'll, the, the conversations are ongoing right now, um, but I don't plan on doing an executive order. You've just returned from a trip to, to Israel. Uh, what was the purpose of that trip and what did you accomplish? Well, it was an invitation extended to us and really it came down to a friend in need as a friend indeed. And I wanted to prove it uh, personally. And it was well received. I heard a number of times uh, when I was there that they were a, a bit impressed and maybe surprised you might say that we got there so fast. They said, you're fast and first. And I said, that's in our DNA. We always <laughs> try to be in the pole position, you know, in Indiana. Uh, but it was overly appreciated and you know we have so many ties we've got israeli companies here uh, our import export businesses indiana university and notre dame have educational programs our indiana national guard who was also has been so instrumental in getting us through covid um, we train on the you know homeland uh, defense fronts uh, and so we've been you know hand in glove with our israeli partners for decades and I wanted to make sure that they knew when that invitation was, was extended that it wasn't just going to be a text or a tweet or a letter or a phone call. I'd take them up on their on their uh, invitation and uh, good things will come from it. And this is a time of unrest there. Did you observe that? I did. Uh, they took me out to some of their batteries. Uh, they took me out to review the Iron Dome. I did walk through some uh, uh, a neighborhood that had been hit and, and how sad that is to think that you've got 15 seconds to get down into a safe room or a safe place and you know when you're when you're looking at burned out baby strollers um, it's it's eye-opening and and uh, that's that's the reason why you know just like COVID we're all in this together the world is a small place time flies we got to stick together. Five seconds. Who's winning the race? Uh, Joseph Newgarden. Joseph Newgarden. Yes. yes. The governor yeah, or Simona. is in. I'll go second in Simona. <laughs> I'll root for both of them. Thanks for There's joining the us. There's the politician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there. All right. Governor, thanks so much. Uh, Laura Steele, over to you.